Roger Bannister was the first human being to run a mile in less than four minutes, and sadly, he's died at the age of 88. Dick Telford is a sports scientist. He was a distance runner and coach himself, and at one stage met Roger Bannister. Dick Telford, good morning to you. Oh, good morning, John. How important was it to break through? That's become one of the iconic moments, the four-minute mile. Why was it so important that that benchmark was broken? <laughs> well, I, I guess it was... Uh colleagues of mine in those days, uh, I wouldn't have known them uh, directly because I was too young, that uh, were in the physiology area that would have said that uh, uh, the human being just cannot run a mile in under four minutes. It is physically impossible. And it was considered one of those, uh, one of those barriers that uh, human uh, physiologists sort of thought that, that no, that's never, never going to happen. So this proved that in fact you could do things that you thought were impossible. Well, I think that's what it did. Um, not only in running, but in other sports as well. It, it, in breaking down a barrier like the four minute mile, um, not only uh, inspired others, uh, and indeed uh, our champion runner uh, uh, in, in um, uh, oh, nearly forgot his name. I got a metal block on his name. Roger Bannister. Oh, no. No, I was talking about uh, John Landy. I, oh, I yes. Was thinking about, sorry, John, but uh, John Landy, uh, just 46 days later, um, he broke that, uh, that barrier again and did it even better. I think he ran 357 or something like that. Uh, from uh, and, and just showed that then a stream of other people started to do it. So it just showed um, people around there were no human barriers, that human beings could sort of get over any sort of barrier if you could get over this four minute mile. So it inspired people to say, well, okay, nothing is an unbreakable benchmark. Is that the, the point of this particular one, this breakthrough? I think it was, John. You know, look, we, we, talk, in, uh, we talk about asymptotes, you know. Uh, an asymptote is a sort of a curve that is approaching a line but never, ever gets there. Um, and I think, we're, you know, we can also talk about the, uh, the two-minute, um, the two-hour, I should say, the two-hour barrier in marathon running as being a sort of equivalent. Can any human being get under two hours? Like, we're so close. In a four-minute mile, we've got this asymptote, you know. Is there sort of a ceiling that all human beings approach that can never get past? Well, it doesn't seem to be. There's always a, a human being through genetic or training or other aspects that in, in, in sport, as, as, as we're talking about now, can actually break these barriers. There's sort of no limits. And I think Roger Bannister was one of the first to show there are no limits. Well, what I think Sebastian Coe said he's the man who made the impossible possible. We've seen this in the swimming pool particularly as well, where it seems that uh, when you think a record is like, that's never going to be... No one will ever be able to do better than that, and people do. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, we only have to look at what's happening in distance running these days for coming out of Eastern Africa, where you've got a combination of the environment, you know, training it in perfect conditions almost, at altitude. You've got a huge population of, uh, of young aspiring runners that want to emulate their champions over there. And you've got um, the genetic thing, that you, we're, we're continuing to get better genetic combinations. And, and these, these so-called barriers to running, you know, that we're talking about like the, the two-hour marathon or the, you know, or the, the, the 1954 four-minute mile, um, they're continuing to be smashed and it's, uh, it's, it's human being. You met him on one occasion. What was he like? Oh, I, I, I've known a lot of people, well, acquaintances of Roger Bannister. I, um, Roger came over, Sir Roger Bannister came over to talk to me about altitude training and how Sebastian Coe should be preparing for a particular Olympics. And uh, uh, it was a strange situation there because I didn't know who he was. He sort of walked in through my door and it was only after about five minutes that I realised I was talking to the great man. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a funny situation, that one. But... Um, Another one of my acquaintances who was the first medical practitioner at the ANU actually uh, gave me a, an interesting story about Sir, Ron, Sir Roger in, in his days of, uh, uh, of studying with him because he used to walk past Christ College at Oxford University to go to his morning lectures in, in a medical school over at Oxford and this uh, he used to um, one day started cycling. When he started cycling he noticed this other, this other person uh, each morning would jog up behind him and then run past him. And until it got to be a, a real race, and, he, and, and 
And in the end, he said, I'm going to get this guy. And he sprinted off in his cycle, and, and the guy just ran straight past him and got to the lecture first. And he, he found out his name was Roger Bannister, and that was when Roger was around about the 21 years old age. <laughs> Went on to a distinguished career as a neurologist, which just shows that uh, you, you people who seem obsessed with running, you, you, you kick on a bit, don't you, Dick? <laughs> uh, it's all good fun, you know. I, it, it's interesting, I was just thinking about the four-minute mile, John, and um, uh, I've got a, a group of runners up here, middle-distance runners, and uh, people who are running the Commonwealth Games in the in the marathon, and, and uh, another one in the steeplechase. But I've, I was just thinking, I've got four young runners who are all four-minute milers, and uh, you know, they're not our old names by any means. It just shows how things have changed over, I think, 64 years since that Ifley Road, Oxford um, uh, triumph that uh, that uh, Roger Bannister and his coach Fran Stample, you know, got in, in, in those particular days. And I can remember too, just uh, you know, John, that I remember waking up in 1954 to read uh, to read the Argus. So I was living in Parkville before it became a good place to live, and uh, down there in Melbourne. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I remember going out. I used to pick up the Argus, and, and this this guy broke in the four minute mile. Could not believe it. You know, it was just fantastic news. Well, it is still one of those remarkable moments. Thank you indeed for your reflections on this milestone and the passing of the man who set it today. And best wishes. Dick Telford, leading Australian sports scientist, distance running coach, and was the first sports scientist himself who was employed by the Australian Institute of Sport, where some of those stories he just told us took place. 17 minutes to 10.